Hello, we are York County School of Technology from York, Pennsylvania. My name is Christopher Casserly, and my team members are Daquan King, Benjamin Reed, Brandon Robinson, and Autumn Neal. Our project is located in Eagle, Idaho at 4180 West Sly Fox Street on Lot 14, Block 12. The building drawings were created by Daquan King and myself. We utilize AutoCAD 2017 in the creation of the drawings. We were given the Oak Park floor plans, required room sizes, roof plans, elevations, and a detailed list of included features. With this information, we had to provide a full set of walk, walk, working drawings that included floor plans, foundation plans, roof plans, elevations, cross sections, details, and schedules. We started the process with research using the Eagle Idaho website for, for local building codes. We also used the 2012 International Residential Code Book and the 2012 International Building Code Book. To gather information about the soil, we used the 2012 International Residential Code Book and compared these to local soil tests and various internet sources. With this information, we were able to determine the required foundation depth and size. Now here's Daquan King with more information about the drawings. Hi, my name is Daquan King. We use poured wall foundations along with the crawl space to complete our building. We decided to extend the vapor barrier from the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall and across the crawl space floor. The reason why we chose to do this is so we can prevent moisture from affecting the insulation within the crawl space. We made sure that all windows in the bedrooms were made to egress, and also we had floor joists that ran from the front of the building to the rear of the building, along with beams to carry out the weight of the building to the foundation. Some problems that we faced as a team were the interior elevations, along with footing details, flashing details, and framing details. Other problems that we have faced were finding proper manufacturers and products to help finish our completed schedules. And now I'm going to pass it over to Benjamin Reed and Brendan Robinson for the estimations. Hello, my name is Benjamin Reed, and my partner Brandon Robinson and I worked together to complete the construction estimate for the project. During our time working together, we had to utilize several tools to efficiently and accurately complete the estimate. Some of those tools included Google Spreadsheets, Microsoft Excel 2016, the RS Means Residential Cost Data Book of 2016, a Scale Master Classic, and various online resources for tough to find materials. The Scale Master Classic is a handheld device that we utilized on printed drawings to calculate lineal foot measurements. Those measurements were then used for various processes, such as calculating stud amounts for the building. Microsoft Excel is a very useful tool that we utilized in several ways. One such way is it gave us a way to organize our data in a way that is both appealing and easy to understand. We also utilized it to efficiently communicate information between team members. During the estimating process, we also had to consider pre-construction costs as well. A few of those costs included permits. Some of the permits we had to consider were for plumbing, electrical, and the building permit itself. We also had to consider construction financing costs. The way we calculated this was by figuring out how much interest we would accumulate over a three-month period for the $234,000 loan required to complete construction. We also had to consider construction support costs, which are items that are required to be on site for building to take place. A few of those were temporary electric, a portable toilet, and a dumpster. Now on to Brandon Robinson to tell you more about the estimating process. Hello, my name is Brandon Robinson. In addition to the previously mentioned tools, we utilize the RS Means Cost Data Book of 2016. We mainly use this to gather prices on equipment and labor, labor costs. Some of these include excavation, grading, and roof framing costs. We also use internet sources to gather local fees and material costs. Some of these include concrete, permits, and LVLs. Some of the challenges that our team faced was coordinating information between all of us. One specific example is coordinating between the schedule and the estimate to make sure 
that all permits that have inspections also are both on the estimate and schedule. We also struggled with locating appropriate codes and maintaining those codes to make sure that we could meet all specifications within the building and following the codes. We also struggled with finding some unspecified materials. One way that we found some of these materials was making sure that we looked through Chazidio's website and finding the video and watching it to make sure that we could find all the materials that we could. To create the estimate, we used a simple system. First, we gathered a base cost for the materials and then multiplied it by the quantity of what we needed. We then added in our labor costs. After doing all of this, we found that the total material and labor costs for the home were $233,000 $962.41, with an estimated 15% profit cost of $37,000, and a 2% overhead of $4,960, and a 6% real estate tax of $14,037, we estimated the home could be sold for $290,900. Now to Autumn Neal to talk about the schedule. Hello, my name is Autumn Neal. I created the construction schedule. To create the schedule, I used Fast Track Schedule 9. I had not used this software before, but I quickly learned how to use it. The assigned start date for this project is March 1, 2017, with an estimated end date of June 9, 2017, coming to a total of 87 working days. March is the best time to begin this project because the temperature is beginning to rise, allowing the ground to thaw. This will make excavating easier and quicker. A downside to working during this time period is that it is the rainy season in this area. The schedule provides the names of tasks, the start and end dates of each task, the total number of days for each task, and the chronological order of the tasks. Internet resources were used to verify permits and inspections needed for Eagle Idaho. Also, previous examples of construction schedules were used to have a basic understanding of scheduling. To receive a building permit from Eagle Idaho, there's a 10 to 12, re there's a 10 to 12 day review process. The plans are reviewed in the order which they are received by the offices. At the end of the re review process, the contractor will be notified of the final steps to receive the permit. The main challenge when scheduling is determining how long to allow the concrete footings and walls to set. It is typical to leave seven to 10 days for concrete to set. In Idaho, this may be longer during the rainy season. A third party inspection is completed at the end of the construction process. This inspection is done to provide peace of mind to the owner. We would like to thank the NEHB judges, the endowment, and Trezidue Homes for providing our project. Thank you for your time, and now we will take any questions. Who drew the plan? Okay. On, I, on the um, check, it, I see check five, I don't see drawn five. Um, that's one of the things that'd be nice to know who drew them. Uh, and but I see for four names there it says check by, but nobody drew it. Um, right. The drawn by should be under the contact information and the project team on the cover sheet. Oh, there it is. Okay, I'm blind. I'm sorry. The uh, these plans are so good. If you gave me these plans, I can go out and build them. Thank you. And they're almost totally complete for what I need for a permit. Almost. Thank you. So I made notes on there on things. Um, the ceiling height on here, be very careful. Uh, you label nine foot ceiling height. You actually gave me the header height, thank you. Because not a lot of teams gave me the header height at seven foot six for the windows on the exterior. But on the nine foot, be very careful because the if you give it to a lumber yard, they're gonna bid out to build a nine foot finished ceiling or nine foot ceiling. And you probably intended nine foot one and a three cut system. Um, so be very careful when you label that on the bullet items that you clarify 9.1 and 8. Um, the other item I had on there is when you look at a plan, like this, beautiful details. All your details are great. 
When you look at it, all I see is lines. You, you label a product and you drew a line and you touched it. And so when I'm looking at this beautiful section and all your elevations are the same way, all I see are these lines at angles. Remove them. I have no need for them. If I see where I need a flashing detail, like your front step, I will then point to that detail because that piece of flashing is so thin you don't see it. So I'll point to flashing. So, okay, that was a note for myself. But please get rid of all those extension lines. There's no need for them at all to point to something. Okay. Uh, put them in a chronological order from exterior to interior or out to in as long as everything's always in order. I can look at this and know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, Good thank job. you. Great job on the plan. Thank you. I'm so proud of you guys. This makes me feel like I should be hiring a lot more high school labor. <laughs> Sorry, Dallin. But um, a, lot, a lot of good things going on here. Um, I uh, was curious about uh, the third party inspection of $350. Um, can you explain to me exactly what that's for? And then I have a follow up question. Um, the third party inspection was just something that we found on the, uh, one of the two spec sheets that we were given, either the five star quality sheet or the spec sheet we were given for everything with the home. And it's basically just for peace of mind. It's one of those final steps that a homeowner could put in to make sure that there's no like last minute things that like might have been like looked over by a builder, like electrical problems, like mold anywhere, something like that. Okay. And then did you account for anywhere a HERS rating? Uh, in your schedule or estimate? Uh, I do not uh, think home we Home energy rating? I do not think we did, no. Okay, all right, thank you. Great job, guys, this, this is awesome. I'm gonna reiterate what Dean said, the, the blueprints were fantastic, some of the best we've seen. <clears throat> uh, same with the estimate, you've got the units, the quantity, the labor, the material, everything's totaled up, all of the column headers pull over, You've gotten all of the, the major components in here. Um, and these components actually match the schedule and the drawings. So that's great. Uh, I just have a couple small items on the, let's see, on the schedule. Looks like, I know that you had talked about the, the backfill and allowing you know, a good seven to 10 days prior to uh, backfilling, which is great. Uh, so my question would be, uh, Looks like you're pouring the foundation on March. Thirteenth? But not backfilling until April seventeenth. Is there a reason why there's a month in there? Instead of seven to ten days? Uh the reason that the there's a such a large gap is to give time for other work to take place before the backfill there's other work that can be done before the backfilling takes place. Okay. That's all I have. Well, uh, sounds like I need to start looking for a new job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> um, so for some reason I didn't ever receive a copy of your plans. Um, that being said, I, I did uh, get a chance to look at John's and graded it. So. I don't think that was your, your fault, so I'm not going to ding you for that or anything, but um, uh, but just apologize, I didn't get to look at them really good before today, uh, but just from the things I did see, um, uh, one comment was on the foundation plan, it looked like we had a foundation underneath the slab on the side, uh, under the AC unit, um, I'm just going to caution you that this, the setbacks, um, it comes to 40 feet and that's the width of the house and so adding that foundation in that location would make it so the house wouldn't fit anymore so just uh, caution on that and then uh, just a second question on the schedule uh, during the presentation you had mentioned that it takes longer for the concrete in in Boise in the rainy season to cure is there can you tell me more about why that might be if the concrete is exposed to too much moisture while it's trying to set, it will not set in the time. Awesome, thank you. 
absolutely tremendous job. Um, I just the level of detail, the level of coordination is astounding. Um, the way that you worked as a team, and clearly you worked as a team, um, just great job. Um, my favorite is on the drawings uh, that checked by. Taking responsibility for the set of drawings, taking responsibility for uh, each other's work and coordinating. Um, the level of detail, as I had mentioned earlier, um, things like a valley flashing detail. I mean, how cool is that? Um, lights, I saw lights on the plans. Um, it, the, fi the fireplace uh, enlarged things. The um, cabinets, it just overall, really, really wonderful job. Um, the only couple comments is just things like the stair section. Um, you have it on your drawings, but there was some, you know, rising run, a little bit more information, maybe even, you know, a plan or something like that. You know, kind of, if I'm looking at, you know, from, from a, um, just a, an overall coordination, that's a very important detail that you would want to incorporate. And other than uh, advanced framing, possibly not really being addressed, and um, possibly some things code-wise, such as uh, uh, working with the R R38 and an energy, energy trust or something like this going back and forth. Um, absolutely amazing job, it really is. Um, can you tell me just how you work together? And what I'd like to see is also, um, what was the most fun in the whole process? If each one of you could answer that, please. Um, as a team, we are always constantly checking each other's things. That's what we use, uh, the Google spreadsheets. This allowed us to all be on it at the same time, even in different locations. Um, the most fun for me was the drawings, because I got to do a lot of the drawings. And that's, I love to add a lot of detail into my drawings. It's just a lot of fun. Honestly, I think that the most fun I had during this was working with these people because normally I wouldn't like work with these people and I found it fun to actually work with them. I think the thing I enjoyed most about the project was working with Brandon on the estimate and coming together to figure out different materials that would work better for certain situations and just really working through it as a team and figuring things out. Um, as Chris said, uh, one of the things that we used was Google Sheets, but we also used um, Google with the presentation. We totally did on Google, so we could coordinate everything like, hey, we're going to say this, this is what I want to say, this is what I want to do. And it was able to say, we could go back and say, well, you're saying this, but we have this. And it allowed us to like triple check everything that we had done and catch any mistakes that we had found. Um, I think a lot of fun that I had on this project was just constructing the estimate with Ben, um, working with a lower classman and training somebody new for next year. So. I think the most fun part of this was working on all aspects of the project and working with my teammates who I would not typically work with. Thanks for revealing some of your secrets there, but no, it's, it's like, how, how did you do it? No, wonderful, thank you. Uh, great job. I always appreciate uh, seeing the work that you guys turn in. Uh, however, I do have a few uh, questions. Uh, what size paper did you guys actually print these on? Uh, we drew them for 22 by 20, um, 34 and then scaled down to 11 by 17. Okay. You drew it to quarter inch scale, correct? Correct. So what scale should it be when it's half scale? It should be half sized. Which would be? Uh, would be one eighth scale. An eighth scale. One eighth scale. These don't scale up to one eight. At least mine doesn't. Uh, okay. And uh, then I guess the next question, and unfortunately I'm going to be, I think, asking you again, but maybe somebody else will handle it. Uh, why did you choose the steel beams in the basement rather than the lamp, uh, LVLs or something like that? Um, steel beams, we. Uh, we typically use these on previous uh, projects, and they're just more familiar. We're more familiar with steel beams. 
Okay, is, is there any real advantage though to use them in the field? Yes, no, cost or availability? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, no problem with that. That's all I have. Anybody else? Yeah. Great, thank you very much.